Good day doodlers, welcome to Draw Cartoons. Today we'll be looking at how to draw Wraith from Apex Legends. Make sure you watch until the end because I've got a few useful tricks for you today. You're going to need a pencil, paper, an eraser, and a sharpie to go over your sketch with. Let's go! Let's get started. But first, if you want to learn to draw the fast and easy way, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Let's begin! So as usual, we're going to start with the head. So draw in a circle shape, just like this. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just draw in a kind of shape here and we're gonna draw around it a lot. These are just guidelines. So make sure you're just using a pencil for now because we're gonna erase a lot of what we're working on at the moment. Just gonna kind of show us where to draw everything else. So cut that circle in half down the middle and then carry it on and form a kind of lollipop shape. When you get to about this height here, which is roughly three heads in height, just draw a line that goes from left to right, and that's going to be where our character's standing. That's kind of the floor where, where she's standing. So don't worry about things being too neat at the moment. We're going to get into the nitty gritty things uh, real soon. For now, let's work on the head a bit more. We're going to draw a big kind of bump right over the top. This is her hair. All right, and that bump kind of starts at one side and goes over to the other side. Really we could draw a line across the middle of this circle and you can see here that's where the hair kind of starts if you want to kind of use that as a guideline first. And on top of this let's just draw a circle for now. Um, that's kind of the bun in her hair but we'll add some detail to that later. And now we're going to position the eyes. Because we've got this line here and this line here we know exactly where to draw her eyes. So we're going to draw in some kind of narrow shapes here. One here and one on this side of the face. And then time to draw the nose. Just going to draw a curve that comes away from the middle and then back in towards the middle. Just kind of lots of small strokes with your pencil for now. We're going to finalize everything with a sharpie later. And then just give her a little smirk sticking up at the side of her cheek there. Now let's draw another line just across here very gently, it's just a guideline. Uh, that's about the halfway point of this semicircle. So about halfway up there we're going to draw a line right across. That's her hairline. So from there we're going to draw a line that kind of curves down around her eye, comes up a bit. It's a bit, bit of a wavy look that. You can be quite flexible with that really because it is hair and hair changes shape a lot really when it comes to drawings. And then we're going to draw the other side of her hair, just a fringe coming down. Again just kind of sweeps past one of her eyes, comes back up, comes back down a bit. And then we can finish it by just coming up to the side of her face. Now her head's looking a little bit round, so we can add a chin here if we just kind of bring this down here and then come back up to the side of the face. So just adding a bit of length to the face so it looks a bit longer and not so round. Um, we'll perfect that later when we go over it with a, with a sharpie, but for now just kind of make sure that chin is, is showing up there. Now let's finish off the face. So we've got one pupil here. I'm going to draw a semicircle underneath her top eyelids. There. So we get this impression that she's kind of frowning at the viewer. And then let's just draw in some eyebrows, narrowed and kind of frowning at us. She looks very, very kind of scary at the moment, like she means trouble. Now let's start on that, uh, the rest of the body. We're going to start on the scarf. So we can actually draw two big kind of loop shapes that sit just under her head. One like that, and then a bigger one sitting underneath, just like this. So it curves around through the middle, and then up over a shoulder. Now, as we always do, we're going to imagine that this line down the middle here, this one, is acting like a mirror. Uh, if you kind of pretend that's a mirror, it'll help you to understand uh, how the body should look. So starting here and starting here, I'm going to start on this side first. We'll draw a line that curves towards the middle, but then comes out and stops about here. This is her, this is her torso, so waist coming in and a hip here. And then when you get to about that level, feel free to just gently draw a line across. Uh, that might help you to understand how wide you want to make her hips. And again, we need to draw this on the other side, this kind of hourglass shape. So in, 
and then out. Now there's going to be a lot of overlapping of shapes, just like we have at the chin and just like we have at these guidelines here. Don't worry about that, it's fine if things overlap because it's very very early in the drawing still. I'll just draw a couple of curves here on the chest and then a line across here right where the waist kind of begins to point inwards. We'll draw another line here because it's another belt. She's wearing a lot of belts this character. I don't know what it is about these Battle Royale games but they're all we always wearing a lot of belts aren't they? So one belt here and then there's one more big thick belt right underneath that one and the buckle on this belt is pretty big so make sure you draw this buckle here a bit bigger than the one above it that's right there. Now once you've gotten that far we can pretty much shape in the legs now so I think it's easier if we just kind of draw a line here for where the legs meet but then on either side of that we'll draw a line that curves down just like that so it curves kind of out a bit and then down and obviously we need to draw that on both sides and try and get that as symmetrical as, as you can try and get it looking the same on both sides and then starting from the hips we can kind of draw the rest of the leg shape down okay so you're just kind of following the same kind of curving shape that you were drawing as if you've just kind of carried on drawing the hip but carried on going down and then once you get to the end about, about this kind of area here this is going to be where the ankle is so we can just kind of draw a curve down here and down here and these are her feet and they'll just kind of sit on that line that we drew right at the start this kind of horizontal line that she's standing on Okay, so let's work on those legs. There's lots of details in those legs. So there's a strap going from the very top of this hip down to the inner thigh like this. So we'll just draw a couple of lines in for that. And she's actually got the same on the other side. So again, just kind of meeting from the inner thigh up to the outer hip, just like that. Now there's a thin line that kind of sits underneath these, again on the inner thigh. So draw that in just now. And then she's got a funny pattern on her knee. She's got kind of like a grey shin pad kind of pattern going on. So I think the best way to draw this is if you just kind of come away from this knee a bit, draw across, draw down, and then back to the knee like that. Just one big box. Okay? So obviously she's got that on both sides. So we'll just draw the other box in now. Now, how are we going to get that into four stripes? Well, Here's a, here's a nice way to do that. We'll cut this in half across the middle on both sides, and then we'll cut those halves in half again. So nice and careful with your pencil, just kind of drawing in those extra halves. So we should end up with four quarters of that rectangle on each side. And then we go over it with a Sharpie, that's going to look really, really nice. Those kind of thick lines are really going to block that out, make it look right. So moving on just for now, she's got a few buckles here very very small on her thigh and all these little details make the difference if you if you leave big areas blank it can sometimes look quite wrong so these little details will make all the difference in your drawing she's got like a, a little zip going down here that meets with the uh, kind of the knee pad there so make sure you draw that on both sides and then just below these kind of knee uh, rectangles here that we've drawn there are some shin pads so we're gonna draw in a blocky shape here that comes down and it actually continues along the front of her foot like that. Kind of a weird shape that one. We'll try and get that down as best you can. So I'm just going to do it on the other side again to demonstrate. Just curving out and then following the shape of the foot and just kind of going on top of the foot like that. Now before we add any further details we need to add a strap that's going right over the foot and going underneath it. So it kind of starts here where the, uh, where the foot bends and then finishes roughly halfway along where the sole is. So I'm just going to draw two lines in there for a strap. I'm just going to draw it again on this side to further demonstrate what I mean. There's just kind of like a... Try and get it to curve around the foot. Now don't draw it too straight down like this or it'll make the foot look really flat. Now once you've drawn that, we'll draw a straight line right across the bottom of her boots. This is the sole of her boots. Okay. Nice and uh, nice and simple. If you like, you can add. She's got a red pattern that kind of goes off the front of the shoe and then follows the sole along. So you can draw that in if you want. I'm going to do it on mine. I think it looks a little bit better with all these extra details. Now, the shin pad is actually covered by a few straps that kind of go along it. 
So there's going to be more overlapping done, which is fine. Overlapping is really, really normal when, you are, when you're drawing a picture. So there's one kind of big strap right across the top of the shin pad here. Okay, and the same on the other side. Really, really big strap going right around the shin. Kind of holding that. Oops, made that one a bit too thick there. Kind of holding that shin pad right in place, I suppose. She likes a bit of security on that, doesn't she? So we'll add another strap just here. Maybe not quite as thick as the one above it. Okay, and obviously that's on both sides again. Now, there's another added detail for these uh, for these kind of straps, this top strap here. There's kind of bolts going along it in a weird sort of up and down pattern like this. Almost like a zigzag shape. So you can draw those in if you like. And now those legs are actually done, so we can move on to the arms now. I left the arms for last because they're not symmetrical. They're probably a bit tricky. I'm going to show you how to draw those. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to draw an arm the way I usually do. I'm going to start from the shoulder. I'm going to come down to about this sort of length here, draw a line across for the wrist, and then just follow that shape back to where the shoulder would be. The shoulder would be about here, but we can't see it, so that's fine. It just kind of sits underneath the scarf. Now, I'm going to draw in a fist. I have done a tutorial on how to draw hands, so you don't have to draw your hand like this if you want. Um, you can follow my other tutorial on how to draw hands and draw any kind of shape of hand you want, really. But I'm going to draw in a fist here just because I think it suits a lot of these Battle Royale characters very well. Kind of a clenched fist, looks very threatening. Now, just a line across here for a purple strap that sits on her wrist. And there's actually two more of these, so I'm going to draw these across the arm like that. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm putting a slight curve on these so it looks like it's going around the arm. Remember, don't draw things too flat. Now before I forget, there's a pattern here on her glove and it's just a pattern that kind of separates uh, the back of her hand, or rather the palm of her hand underneath, from the fingers. The fingers have their own kind of coloured bit on this glove. So just kind of draw that in now. And now there's a really, really cool, unique pattern on her shoulder which I'll show you now. So I'm going to kind of come in towards the centre of the arm, but then suddenly swing back up as I get to the middle. Okay, so I end up with this kind of arrow. And once I've drawn that, there's a really cool kind of crisscross pattern that I can just kind of draw in here. So we've got kind of a hash pattern going across it, and where each time the lines cross over, like there and there and there, there's kind of a blob. So let's just sketch that in now. I think it's actually like a steel point that's uh, for helping her manage her ele electricity. I don't really know why it's there, but it looks pretty cool, so I'm going to draw it in. And if you want, there's a little elbow pad here. I'm going to squeeze that in right there. Now, the other arm is almost the same. There's a small difference. I'm going to give it a different shape to the other one because of the way she holds her hand when she's uh, readying her moves. So I'm going to kind of come away here. It's probably easier, actually, if I start with the shoulder. I'm going to start here instead. So I'm going to come away from the shoulder and kind of the same again but I'm curving outwards rather than down draw a line for the wrist and bring it back up to where the armpit is now here's gonna be a really really kind of tricky hand shape but let's do this together so I'm gonna draw a thumb kind of sticking out like this and then a small little bump here for where the thumb goes into the hand if you look at your thumb now and the way it connects to your hand you'll see there's a bump here right in your hand so that's why I'm drawing that and then one finger two and three. Three little bumps for those fingers. And again, her gloves are the same on this side where there's this pattern going on. The fingers have their own uh, kind of part of the glove. Now, let's draw in some straps for this thing that's going around her arm. But before we do that, I'm going to draw in this kind of zigzag shape here. It's a small modular piece for her arm that kind of sits right there on the forearm. And then those straps can just kind of come in here. One for the wrist and one across the arm. Now don't forget she's got this, this unique kind of hash pattern again on her shoulder. So we'll draw that in now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Don't have to be too perfect with that. We'll just kind of get that pattern in. And then you can start drawing in those little blobs where the corners kind of meet. Now we're almost there. We've just got a few details missing. Uh, we've got the back of her scarf just hanging down behind her back here. Just kind of draw that there behind well either that shoulder you could even draw it here if you want to it's your drawing there is a satchel sitting on her hip here so it's going to add in a few details there just to make it look a bit more a bit more real there's a grenade sitting on her hip here now that's just a simple kind of 
Uh, I guess it looks a bit more like a roll-on deodorant. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> in case she gets sweaty in the heat of battle. So that just kind of sits there. Again, overlapping. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just don't go over those overlaps when we ink it. And then there's a strap that kind of goes across her chest here. And it curves up under the scarf. Just there. And then there's another really small strap just sitting underneath that scarf, that part of the scarf there. Now, if you want, I'm going to do this. Uh, you can add some electricity uh, patterns coming away from her hands like this, kind of bouncing off her hands. Because in a lot of her art, she's got that going on anyway, just kind of this energy coming out of her hand. So I've added a few lightning bolts. Maybe you want to arc them off like that in little, little branches so it looks a bit more electric. And our sketch is done, so I'm going to get my Sharpie, or, well, you should get your Sharpies, I'm working on a computer. Go over all the lines that you want to keep, and we should have a really, really awesome drawing of Wraith. Make sure you only go over the lines you want to keep with your Sharpie. This is a great time to correct any last mistakes you spot as you go over your sketch and fix them. For example, I decided to make her chin a little more narrow, and I added some details at the bottom of her hair on her head, which I should have done when I was sketching it. There you have it. You have your very own drawing of Wraith to show your friends. Here's a question for you. Do you already have a favourite character on Apex Legends? If so, who is it? Let me know in the comments below. I might do a tutorial on them real soon. On that note, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. Until next time.